My five-year-old daughter asked for cookies and milk for her snack today. Yes, that is T-Swift you can hear in the background. Uh, the babysitter turned the five-year-olds on to it, so I have five-year-old Swifties now. Good thing they don't know about the Eras tour yet. <laughs> anyway, I said yes to the cookies and milk because why not? And it was snack time and I let them pick what they want for snack. But I didn't realize we were out of cookies. So I would have said from the beginning we were out of cookies. Instead, I said yes. And she went to look for the cookies and couldn't find them. So she's standing at the pantry whining saying I want cookies I want cookies and I kept repeating I'm so sorry I didn't realize you're out of cookies but we don't have cookies and she kept saying over and over I want cookies and milk I want cookies and milk and I could feel myself getting irritated so I took a big old deep breath and I got down on her level and I said I know you're upset that we're out of cookies and I'm sorry that mom didn't look before she said yes and you are expecting to get cookies because that's what it really was, right? She had mentally planned in her head that she was having cookies for her snack. I said, so let's figure out what else you wanna have for snack or what else sounds good. And she still whined and sometimes that happens. And so then I said, do we need to like calm down before we decide what we want for snack? And she said, yes. So we went and sat in the calm down corner and I was sitting with her and we we're kind of talking and. Then I said, okay, what is sounding good? And she said, that's the problem. I don't know what sounds good. So this particular child, a lot of times, if she has an idea in her head about how it's supposed to go or something that she wants, then it doesn't work out that way. She has a hard time making a decision or adjusting her brain to the new plan, right? She like freezes with indecision. So I was like, okay, let's go look in the pantry together and find a snack. So I started offering her stuff. The second thing she found, she was happy, she liked it, and now she's jamming to Taylor Swift. In the past, I've handled this very differently depending on my mood and my own nervous system. And I have said things like, stop whining, we don't have cookies and milk, I told you over and over again. If you keep whining, then I'm just gonna pick a snack for you out of desperation because the whining makes me uncomfortable and I'm trying to get ready for work. But when I can really, sorry, it's hard to talk and do makeup. When I can really center myself and respond in like a calm and empathetic way, it doesn't change the fact that she whines. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, I apologize, I validated her feelings, and she was still upset. She still wanted cookies. And so she needed a minute for her brain to accept that the plan had changed. And then she had to calm down enough to be able to express to me that she didn't know how to make the next decision and she needed help with that. This child hasn't been officially diagnosed as neurodivergent, but she is, so. <laughs> um, and something that really helps with neurodivergent kids is knowing that their brain gets stuck on how they think things are going to go. Neurodivergent people, including myself, we auto rehearse, this is really hard in the camera. We auto rehearse how we expect things to go. And when they don't go that way, it can send us into fight or flight. So having the awareness of that can help you in meeting your neurodivergent child where they are at. Now this was a very mellow example and that she wasn't like screaming or she, it's, it's different than my son who will scream and get really upset. She just whines. And to be honest, the whining is more triggering to me as a mom than the screaming. And so sometimes I forget that I need to meet that with just as much patience and compassion as a full blown meltdown with my son. So I hope this was helpful. And if you are looking for ways to help ride the wave with your child, the emotional wave, check out our new Coping for Kids course in our store. We're also offering until Friday, August 11th, a Q&A session as a bonus if you are interested in that. So we can help you implement these skills in your routines and interactions with your kids. And you can even come to the Q&A and give us like very specific examples and we can walk you through what we would do or things that you can try to do.